Hey guys, it's Snapcase. So many of you have been wondering why or how could Apple's new iPhone bend so easily. I'm back with the original iPhone 6 Plus that I bent a few days ago. And I hope to shed a little bit of light on this issue. So I think that it really boils down to four things. And those four things are metal quality, metal thickness, the way that the screen is attached to the body of the phone, and also just some simple physics of the iPhone 6 Plus. So let's first get into metal quality. And the big unknown here is that we don't know exactly what type of aluminum Apple's chosen to use for this phone. They haven't disclosed it. And it's kind of silly that, hap that Apple's hiding behind the whole uh, you know, this custom grade of 6,000 aluminum uh, because no other industry really hides behind some vague definition like that. You know, aircraft manufacturers are very upfront about what grade of aluminum they're using in their aircraft. That's important information. So to me, a custom grade of 6,000 aluminum just translates into the cheapest grade of 6,000 aluminum they could find. So, so while we don't know what type of aluminum they're using, what grade of aluminum, that they're using, we can look plainly at the phone and this one in particular and tell what's going on. So I can tell you guys right now that I am not that strong. I'm pretty sure an elderly person could have done this uh, to the phone. Um, but one of the things that I want to point out first of all is that you will notice on the back of the phone that the two stress points here where the metal is starting to bend significantly is here at the SIM card and over here at the volume button. And what we're going to see is that both of these points, and I'm just going to use a little bit of magnification here uh, to, um, to show you this up close. So, see if I can get that to zoom in. You'll notice that the metal did break here. The aluminum broke, snapped in half there at the volume button, and also snapped in half here at the SIM card port. So what I want to show you is that if you take an ordinary paper clip, now this is a bigger size paper clip, you know, compared to say a, a smaller size paper clip, but a bigger size paper clip, and I'm just going to, this is steel, not aluminum, paper clips made out of steel. And if you just take this and put it up next to there, you're going to see that the thickness of the metal right there is about the same as the thickness of a paper clip. So extremely small, extremely small amount of metal right there. Same right there. It's about the thickness, just a little bit more than a paper clip, but not much. So also, if you look inside of here, you'll also notice that there's even less material. There's even less aluminum because of this little ledge that they've milled out so that the screen can sit in there. So, you know, that's the, the metal thickness issue. I mean, it's very obvious to see that the two weak points are right here and right here. On the phone. I mean, that's where, if you look at it, that's where the, all the stress cracking is coming from, from those two points. The other thing is that you'll notice about this phone is that the, the top of the screen separated from the body, while the bottom of the screen did a little bit here, but overall did not. And I think that's because of these screws here. And so I think that if they were to, you know, increase those clips or put screws in the top to hold the screen in place, it would actually add a lot of rigidity to the phone itself and it may not be as as prone to bending. Now I was impressed that the screen bends like that. It's 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 odd that it does. I guess it's good, but maybe not. I mean, maybe some rigidity would help there. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but the LCD underneath of it is cracked. Um, but what I'm going to try and do now um, is take this screen apart. I haven't done this before. You also notice the battery is in there and the battery is bent. What I'm going to try and do is take this apart and uh, and see if we can look into the inside of the phone a little bit more. Okay, so I'm just going to pull that away. <clears throat> And here you can very clearly tell. Now, I did hear one theory that uh, that this screw right here is acting as a fulcrum point, 
and so it's actually um, working against this this little bracket which is is holding the electronics in for the uh, for the volume buttons but that this is actually acting as a fulcrum point um, right here where where the uh, where the aluminum is so thin so and then again over here obviously cracked and um, went all the way through let me see if I can remove this sim card it hasn't been uh, taken out but I don't know if I can might be in there too much yeah I don't think that's gonna come out now you can tell also it's very odd but the battery is completely bent the battery is just completely bent these things are held in by some pretty tough glue but I, I think that it was pretty pretty odd that the battery bent so much um, so you know obviously you know I think that that it could be solved by going back to this you know the chamfered edges the flat edges which I you know personally when I got the iPhone 6 I did not like the rounded edges you know the phone's a lot more slippery than it used to be I think that if they went back to this design that it would be a lot more stable and this one is, is extremely hard to bend I mean oh, you can see how white my fingers are turning and th there's just no budge in that one whatsoever so you know that's uh that's basically it let's look a little bit more in here at the cracking so yeah you know that's basically it the other thing that i was going to talk about were simple physics and what i mean by simple physics is that the iphone 6 plus is longer than the iPhone 6 and that's simple but if you think about it if you take a a uh, long pencil normal size pencil and you take a golf pencil which one is easier to break it's obviously the longer one so leverage is going to cause this thing to bend more so while they say that the iPhone 6 uh, you know is um, more uh, I guess they say it's easier to break. I actually don't buy that. I think that the iPhone 6 Plus is easier to bend uh, just on simple physics alone. You know, if I take this pencil right here and this pencil right here, which one do you think is going to be easier to break? Obviously, it's going to be the longer one because of leverage, and that's just simple physics. So now, will a case protect your your phone from from bending? I believe it will. If you buy an OtterBox, I think it will. Or uh, you know, life proof isn't out yet. I'll test those out in the future, but. I'm going to put extreme amount of pressure on that and it is bending it a little bit but it is not nothing is breaking nothing is giving and I'm trying very very hard with that so um, you know I think a case will go a long way but obviously you know this should not happen uh, that's just uh, it's unacceptable from a um, manufacturing standpoint and uh, you know I think they should go back to this design and one of the things with Apple is that they are trying to market uh, you know the lightest and the thinnest phone possible and I think that that marketing ploy has really uh, kind of um, uh, you know backfired on them so anyways guys uh, you know one of the benefits of subscribing to my channel is I provide you with in-depth information but at the same time I also like to have some fun with my channel so be prepared for some more videos to come that feature some destruction and also some comedy with new technology uh, if you have something you want to see, leave me a comment below. And as always, guys, stay classy.